hello and welcome. We are getting fancy for no reason. Do you like this look? I'm gonna show you how to do it. I have no experience really other than just doing my own makeup and I have no expertise and I'm not really good at it, but here's a tutorial and a little chat, follow up, round up, completion of my breast augmentation story. I just wanna wrap that up because it's about time. So thank you for checking us out. Thank you for joining us and let's do it. Hello, <laughs> welcome to my channel. If you are new, thank you for coming by. If you are a returning subscriber, video watcher, I just wanna say thank you for sticking with me through how many years now that I've been posting random videos with very poor video and editing quality. I mean, thank you very much. You have faith in me that eventually maybe I'll invest in some quality equipment, but for now, I got a very complex setup going on here because we're gonna do, I can't even say this with a straight face. We're gonna do like a makeup tutorial. <laughs> we're not doing a makeup tutorial. What I am, I thought would be kind of fun since I have absolutely nowhere to go and nothing really on the agenda. December of 2020, Bruce and I are gonna just get ready for, no for nothing. We're gonna get ready for nothing. I remember a time when I used to wear makeup for fun and I really enjoyed the process of putting on makeup. My favorite thing is if I had plans on a Friday or a Saturday night and I would sit at home, pour myself a glass of wine or cold cider and get out all my makeup stuff because I have a lot of stuff and have a bath, a shower, I would do my hair, my makeup, and I would, I would give myself almost like two hours just to do it. I just loved doing it. And then I would go out for 45 minutes and feel overwhelmed by too many people and go home. But I loved the process of getting ready. So that's what we're gonna do today. Um, if in the future you'd like a hair tutorial, <laughs> because I know my hair is something that everybody's wondering. How do I do it? Just kidding, I haven't even showered today. Um, I might do a hair tutorial in the future, but this is what she looks like today. And I'm not probably gonna do my hair because, you know, why? why? Oh, I'm also gonna talk a bit about, I'm gonna just finish off the series about my breast augmentation because that's been a two part series so far and my plan was to do a third one. So we're gonna just tie it all together, why not? So, uh, never underestimate the, the power of a, an amazing dollar store scrunchie. This one I got um, from a dollar store a few months ago. It's velvet, it's great. Velvet seems to work really good to like keep your hair pulled back, it doesn't slip. This one's more of a satiny one and uh, it doesn't hold as well, but this is great for nighttime when you're going to bed. I've made a video about how to take care of your hair, the curly girl method. I don't really follow it anymore. My hair has been through a lot over the years. I've bleached it, I've tried lots of different styles and colors. And for the most part, though it might not look good, it's still pretty healthy and I'm growing it out again. So scrunchie, scrunchie number one, put in a scrunchie. So the first thing I do is I start with a clean face and I'm gonna talk about my breasts while we, while we do this. Let's talk about breasts, baby. Let's talk about you and me. I'm also dressed up wearing my Star Wars t-shirt that I got from my friend Kim who has an online thrift store, Serial Thrifter, I'll link it below. Thrifting online is so much fun. That's the only way I buy clothes now, by the way, as I only buy secondhand for the most part as much as I can. I, I have a lot of clothes at this point. I don't need any more clothes, especially since I wear the same thing every day for the past 10 months. So I use witch hazel as a toner for my skin in the morning and in the evening, just to, to cleanse and clean my skin and it's supposed to be good for you. And I like the natural kind of vibe. So just take a little of this and uh, clean the structure. So I can't even remember how long ago now it was that I did part two of my breast augmentation story. The general vibe overall though in all my videos about this so far, it's almost gonna be five years now since I had my surgery. And the biggest question I get is would I do it again? Do I regret it? And I, I do regret it. I don't 
I wouldn't do it again knowing everything that I know now. And the honest truth was that I was very insecure about my body then and I it didn't change it. It actually amplified a lot of insecurities that I had after I had the surgery because the issues that I had weren't specific to that. It was a general, you know, mental health issue of just insecurities and feeling like um, I wasn't enough as I was. And I thought that this change to myself would change how I looked at myself and how I dressed and how I presented myself to the world and my confidence, but it didn't because I'm just not that kind of person. I generally wear t-shirts and jeans every day. And I thought that if I had these very voluptuous boobs that then I would dress more feminine and I would dress more voluptuous and I'd be more womanly because I just didn't feel very womanly. I'm a very athletic person. I have a very athletic build. I always have and I continued to be athletic after I got them done and it actually made it more challenging for me to do the things I love to do. I for years couldn't do push-ups, couldn't do any chest work and not because it was unsafe, but more, I just was really uncomfortable and it still is to this day. There's still movements at the gym when I do, I feel like my boobs are gonna pop out my armpits and it's a horrible feeling and I hate it. And I don't like feeling like I can't challenge myself at the gym the way that I know I could if I didn't have these foreign objects implanted into my body. So yeah, I regret it. And also it cost a lot of money to get them done. And it's going to cost more money to have them redone because you are guaranteed to have to redo them at some point. They don't last forever and you're going to have to pay for that. And eventually I'm going to have to pay to get them out. And I'm probably going to have to pay to get something done to fix, you know, if things aren't going to look great when they get pulled out and I'm going to have to do something about that. So there you go. So face is clean. Next thing I'm going to do because I'm a responsible woman in my mid thirties is I'm going to do a little serum. If you don't use serum and you're in your thirties, get on the serum train, my friends. This has vitamin C in it and it's brightening and all that stuff. So what it does is just locks in moisture. And as you get older, um, you can start doing this when you're younger. If you're smart, I wasn't, I was baking in the sun with baby oil in my twenties. So We'll see how that looks in another 10 years. Um, but you can put it just in your areas where you're the most dry. My whole face is like the Sahara Desert, to be honest. I have such dry skin. So I can put so much of this kind of stuff on and just sucks it right up. But I like to put it on my forehead, around my um, eyes, because I'm getting those fine lines. And uh, just feels less dry and feels protected throughout the day. Sometimes I feel a little crazy, just put it everywhere. Um, other places that uh, you should put it is your neck. We always ignore the neck and that's gonna catch up to you someday. And then the last part you actually wanna do, <laughs> actually I don't think you're supposed to put serum here, but I do, cause I'm noticing things are getting a little little, <laughs> they're looking aged between, like in the chest and the decollege, de 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 decollege, whatever, in there. So I put some down here. You know, the whole chest, the neck, just, just slather me in serum, serum all day. And pro tip, you can put your serum and your cosmetics and things like face stuff in the fridge, especially in the summer. This It doesn't do anything to preserve your cosmetics but it makes it feel really nice when you put it on your skin and it's nice and cold and cooling, especially if you're puffy. When I wake up in the morning, I look like I got hit by a freight truck. Like I look terrible, no matter how well I've slept, I'm puffy, I'm dry, I'm staticky, I'm frizzy. So anything can help at this, this point. Okay, my final step, and this is this is what I've been doing throughout the whole pandemic, just these these three things, because there's no point in doing anything else because um, I don't leave the house, but uh, let's put on some moisturizer. And I'm not gonna tell you what kind of moisturizer to get. I get mine from the drugstore, but don't squirt moisturizer into your hand and then rub it because you're losing a lot of it. Your hands are gonna suck it up. So you just dab it where you need it. And as you may notice, I have an 
ton of moisturizer and guess what my face will just suck it all up and yes I hydrate before you start commenting and getting on me about drinking water I purchased one of these bad boys throughout the uh, last 10 months it's, sometimes it's a struggle to get through it but I try and drink one of these a day and because I'm a competitive person I like that it's got kind of like time on here that um where I'm supposed to be 10 a.m uh, yeah I don't know but I'm hydrated. Okay. So now we're all, so that's what I do on a regular day. And then I just start working and that's it. And then at night I do the same thing and I put on an anti-aging retinol cream thing because again, mid thirties. Okay. So now makeup, we are going to do a primer. I need primer because my face has blotchiness it gets red in areas especially when i'm about to go out i get super anxious and like stressed out about being social so i just start getting blotching red all over anyway so this helps with that so this is a blur and redness control from maybelline again it's just from the drugstore i'm not you know i got a budget stuff so you don't need a lot of primer so i just dab a little in the areas where my pores are super visible, where I get super red, just to help kind of, you know, help me, help a sister out. Top of my nose is pretty bad. This area generally is pretty bad. Chin, just, you know, my whole face. This helps. Under eyes, you know. It's also primer is great because it helps your makeup stick to your skin because a lot of times the makeup will just, if you notice, I notice throughout the night, I start getting super shiny and my, my makeup kind of just starts to slide off, sweat off, stress off, anxiety off. So this kind of helps it just stay a little bit longer. So that's done. Um, and a wonderful uh, tool that I discovered after 30, sadly, because I didn't start really learning about makeup until much later, is the Beauty Blender. These are amazing. They help blend your foundation. If you're super uh, cakey and dry like me, like I've always found whenever I put on any kind of coverage, like foundation or concealer, it always looks dry or cakey, even when it's a nice liquid foundation. So we're gonna put on some foundation I don't know if this is the right way to do it but I don't need a lot of foundation I just find it makes it you can just tell that I'm wearing it so I just take a teeny tiny bit this is also a pro tip oh, my mirrors over here a pro tip for women my age like in our demographic we're not 20 um, you don't less is more if you put a ton of makeup on more mature skin it doesn't, I just don't feel like it holds up well. And a lot of the, the tutorials I see on YouTube and stuff are for kind of a younger skin, <laughs> I would say. So it just doesn't, does not look the same. So um, there was a, a phase that I went through where I would put on tons of foundation, tons of concealer like I did the whole thing where you did like under your eyes and like the V or the Y or the T or whatever it was and I also did contouring and all this stuff and I just looked kind of nuts it looks great if you're going to a club and it's dark and there's barely any light you look amazing you go into the daylight not so much so just I just do a very light light and if I have a, a zit because Fun fact, even when you're getting wrinkles, you're still getting zits, so that's fun. That's the fun part of life. So whenever I get a zit, I definitely use concealer and I'll do my best to conceal it with that, but that's pretty much all I use it for. So I don't use it usually for going out anymore. Remember going out? I don't. Okay. Another thing about the, the boob job thing is that there is research and things coming out about breast implant illness and as someone who's definitely experienced and struggled with anxiety in my life 
since a young age, I found with the implants, it really compounded that anxiety. Already when you have anxiety, at least for me and attacks and things like that, you have this heaviness on your chest. There's a weight on your chest. It feels sometimes for me like an elephant is on my chest. I can't breathe. I'm very short in my breath. And with the implants, it just was like an internal weight on my lungs, on my chest. And it, I think it amplified my anxiety for years until my body just got more comfortable with these foreign things inside of me. But it definitely um, was a struggle for like, it's like I said, been five years almost now. And they're just starting to feel like a part of me. But oh, it was a long five years of not feeling comfortable with my body, not feeling comfortable to sleep, not feeling comfortable in my clothing, um, not feeling comfortable working out, just bleh. Okay, so our next step is, my next step is I just used some uh, translucent powder. We got some Marcel face powder. Did you know that you need to wash your makeup brushes? And there's lots of lovely YouTube videos out there that give you tips on proper maintenance of your brushes. So I highly recommend you look into that if you're not cleaning your brushes, cause you should. Okay. Gorgeous, just gorgeous. So I just put on some translucent powder to set the foundation and again to help combat the oily shine, the anxiety shine that shines through no matter how much I put over top of my face. And so now I feel like the next thing I should do is some eyeshadow. Now, I've watched a lot of videos about eyeshadow. It is still something that terrifies me. And you know, whenever I've tried to go a little more, uh, complex with it, I look like I got punched in the face. <laughs> so what I like to do is take a palette like this. It's just like pinks and browns, which is super easy to blend and you can't really screw it up. It's, I mean, the blue, as you can see, I've never used it. I would love to use it. And I maybe I'll do another video where I actually try and follow a tutorial where with, that would be pretty funny. Maybe I'll do that. So maybe I'll do a, another video actually trying to do proper makeup. So this is, but this is just what I do. So I'll just take a very light shade, like this like taupey color, and I'll just, you know, dust it around my eyes. Brighten them up, just brighten them up. This is like a very fast, you know, what I would do if, this isn't, I don't know. I don't really, you know, my eyebrows have really grown in over the pandemic. I got a lot of regrowth happening and I'm just kind of waiting to see how it all, how it all looks at the end. I also like to put a little underneath my eyes because I look tired all the time. So there we go. Um, next, I will take a little bit um, darker of a shade. So I use like this one there and then I'll just take this guy. He's a little, he's a little, little darker, a little more dangerous. And I'll just put that in the crease kind of, yeah, just in the crease. Like this is very safe makeup. If you want to experiment with eyeshadow and you just use like light pinks and like soft browns, it'll be fine. Basically I just go with the, uh, method of lighter shade to darker as I get like honed in closer into my eye. So I've gone a little darker into the crease here. And then we are going to, we are going to take a sparkly shade. So I really like this pink. You can see I've used a lot of it. And you just can't go wrong with like dusting a little, little, little sparkle on there. So I just, you know, right over top. Can you see that? I think it looks pretty nice. And like, I just, you know, it's, I don't know if it looks good or bad, but it's, it's, it's me trying and people can see that I've tried when they see me. So that's it for eyeshadow. I'm not gonna do anything more than that. People can tell that I put some on, which means I put some effort into my face and I think people appreciate that. All right. 
So what I would do next is my eyebrows. And uh, I used to just put mascara on my eyebrows because they're pretty black and you could just, and, and that just worked for me. But I did invest in this Anastasia Beverly Hills uh, dark brown matte like um, eyebrow wand thing and it is basically like mascara but I just got suckered into the branding and bought it even though it's the same kind of idea um, and just do this to my eyebrows I'm happy that like thick eyebrows are back I definitely went through a phase of over plucking in the 90s and had like little tiny circular pencil looking eyebrows but I come from a very hairy genetic background so it's just relentless the hair just keeps coming so I was never you know I didn't once I wanted to grow out my brows like I still get a unibrow that's another part of my daily maintenance is I pluck my unibrow and all my chin hairs mustache you know plenty of hair to go around plenty so eyebrows are done I did go through a phase of trying to do crazy Instagram style YouTube, you know, with the concealer and the pencil and it's just, it look, I looked crazy. So we're just doing that. That's all we're gonna do. Okay. Now comes the trickier part, which is the liquid eyeliner. And trust me, I've spent many years studying YouTube videos, trying to learn how to do like the most perfect winged eye, because I love a winged eye with some liquid eyeliner. Um, I just get, I love the kind that has this kind of a tip on it. It's just like pointed at the end. Oh yeah, I'm supposed to do this. So it's easy to just draw it on. And this is what I do. I literally start in the inner corner, press harder as I get to the outside and just kind of draw it back in. So let's just see, I'm gonna do this in this mirror that's pretty far away. No, I haven't really done this much this year. Cause the one thing I don't love about wearing makeup is that eventually you have to take it off. And I hate having to take my makeup off. So honestly, a lot of times I'm like, I could put makeup on, but then I just have to take it off at the end of the night, so why bother? I've just gotten to that stage. Okay. Okay. Okay, so that's not so bad. It actually looks pretty pretty awful in person, but I'm also doing this from far away so I can't really see. Let me just do the other eye. Okay, definitely needing to go in closer to the mirror. And so be right back. Well, this isn't terrible, but it isn't the best I've ever done, but I'm, I'm a little bit uh, rusty because of, you know, and actually it's pretty funny. We had a, a Zoom birthday party not too long ago. And so I thought I would go all out. We wore fancy outfits. I did all my makeup and I did fake eyelashes because that's something that I actually enjoyed also doing sometimes when I went out. I do like the ones where you glue them on. And uh, I realized I can't do them anymore. At least I, I need more practice. I'm out of practice. If you're feeling overwhelmed or that you suck at doing stuff like that, it actually takes quite a bit of practice. And if you don't do it often, you fall out of practice. So I'm out of practice with the fake eyelashes. I got glue everywhere. I had to like give up, rip them off, throw them in the garbage. I've also tried the extensions once and I did not enjoy the process of getting them put on. I thought I would. I thought laying somewhere for two hours would be so relaxing. It wasn't, it was actually painful. My body got very uncomfortable laying in the same position for so long. And also I'm a face sleeper. I sleep like face down a lot. I'm moving around and stuff. I'm, I'm an aggressive face sleeper. And so within the first one or two nights of having those extensions, they were all over my pillowcase. It was like cha-ching, 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 cha-ching all my money down the drain. So I just ended up ripping the rest of them out because it just, 
wasn't working for me. Okay, so eyeliner's done. What do you think? Do they look good? He's impressed. Uh, the next thing I would do is some eye pencil eyeliner. And so we're gonna do, I like doing white. I do, this is a nude color because it kind of opens your eyes up if you're feeling like you're looking a little tired. I've also done blue or purple and black. It's, you know, and I do it on the, the whites of my eyes on the, like the, the water line it's called. So I just, you know, and I've also done this a lot. So if it's something you're like, oh, you have to just do it and try it and see if you can like done. And I feel like I look alive. I look rested. I'm so young. <laughs> okay. Next up, mascara. I just get some from the drugstore, whatever kind you want. And I like to do a little, you know, coat on the back of the lashes, coat them down, and then up you go. And I basically, I like blink into the wand because I don't want like super cakey spider leg mascara, which it generally can turn out looking like. So I just, you know, blink it on. And if it's getting extra cakey, I'll try and have like the wand a little cleaner. You can just give your wand a little wipe. Wipeity, wipeity. So it's not, and then just draw it through. Ta-da! This is going so fast. So one last thing I would say also about my breast augmentation is people ask me, do I recommend getting it? Like, and I don't first off just say no, because I know people that have gotten them in my life and, you know, because of, you know, having children or getting older or gravity or just, you know, everyone is so different in their experiences and where they are mentally and stuff like that. I can't be the judge of um, if this is going to be something that benefits you or not. I only can ask you to make, I can only share what my feelings are about it. And hopefully maybe that might resonate with someone or they might, you know, take a second thought into what the motivation is behind getting them done. My motivation, honestly, at the time was that I would look better with them. I would feel more female with them. I would feel more womanly, feminine, and confident with them. And without them, I was less womanly and all that. And it literally did not do that for me at all, not at all. And um, just becoming more confident and, and connected with myself and doing work on myself and how I feel about my esteem is what's brought me to where I am today, not getting a boob job. So I would just encourage everyone to really think it through. I mean, I waited until I was 31 to get them and I still don't feel like I was in a place mentally to make that decision. So I support anyone going through that process and making that decision, whatever outcome it is that you decide. I just hope that you're very happy and and healthy and you know i don't have kids right now i've never had kids and i wasn't sure at the time that i would have kids and that's another thing like i still don't know all the answers about my future and i don't know how i feel about having implants and breastfeeding and how my body would change if i were to be pregnant at some stage of my life and um i would prefer just not to have them i don't know about my future and i don't know what the future may bring and I feel like my what I thought was going to happen so many times in my life has changed and you know I would just prefer them not to be in the equation at this stage in my life but they are so last thing actually two things so sometimes I like to do a red lip and I'm learning more and more to just do it. I definitely also sometimes feel insecure about doing it. Cause I'm like, it's gonna be on my teeth. I'm gonna touch my face. It's gonna rub, but I actually, I have so much fun with red lipsticks. So I try when I can to wear it, if I am gonna do something fun. Um, I haven't had a reason to do it in a long time, but so when I do wear red lipstick, one thing I recommend is wearing a lip liner. 
um, especially for you more mature folk our lips you can have a little bit of bleeding like of the color onto your skin and this kind of just helps keep it all looking very on point if you will so i just follow my own natural lips oh i'm getting a pimple fun uh like so i guess i could do it using this camera but again these are things you want to do with really good lighting and very close up to a mirror so you can see this is harder to do because i can't really see i've never done the overdrawn lip thing i I feel like I have a face that even with just a tiny bit of makeup, I look like I have a lot of makeup on. So even when I just do this very subtle eye with the li the liquid liner and then a lipstick, it's just like, holy smokes, where is she going? She is a woman on the town. <laughs> okay. So... Okay, so what I did there is I actually like to line the lips, get in those little spots that some more of the lipsticks will lip, often kind of rub off over the night because of drinking and eating and stuff like that. So the liner tends to stay on better, the pencil liner. So I will draw the lips, color them in actually, especially those areas that I know where it rubs off easily. And this is kind of like the foundation for the lips. So you don't have to worry so much about retouching it up throughout the night. Now, this lipstick is amazing. I usually just use a, like a liquid matte from Sephora. Sephora has their own brand of liquid mattes. They're like between $13 and $20, super affordable. But I saw this on my friend, Natalia. It's a NARS liquid matte lip and it is gorgeous. And it goes on so nice and it stays on forever. So I really like this color too. So this is NARS Star Woman. I don't know if they still have this because you know, I bought this a long time ago. So little wand like this. And I just, you just, this is the tip that I learned too. You don't need to double dip in a liquid matte lipstick. You just, one is the stuff that comes out on the wand, the first pull is all the, the product you're gonna need. So don't go back for more. You just, Spread it all around. Oh God. Okay, crisis averted. Do a little blotting. See, only needed one. That's all you need. And then when you go out, bring both of these with you. You can do like, it's easier, especially if you've had a couple of drinks to kind of just fix like finer things with the pencil rather than going on with this because this could become a disaster very quickly. And then this, I generally will never pull this out of my purse again over the course of a night out. I'll maybe use this just a little bit. I'm gonna be putting on some bronzer now just to add some color to my, uh, Hermity, introverted, recluse skin. So I just put it on like wherever. There's no, there's no real method. And then I'll sometimes use a setting spray. So let me get that and we'll finish this video. So I have some setting spray here. This is also just from the drugstore, but it's NYX or NYX, I think. Um, so you just, you can use it before, after. And I actually do feel like this kind of stuff works, the setting sprays to keep your makeup again from kind of just sliding off your face, from getting too shiny and just holding it all together so you look together even when you're falling apart. <laughs> okay, so I also grabbed 
you know, but I put on a, a, a regular human shirt, something that's been in my closet collecting dust since March. I've got a, you know, look at effort put in here. So here we are at the end of my video. I hope that it has been entertaining for you. Comment below if you want me to actually try and do something a little more complex, but this is honestly just what I would do if I had something special to do, but we don't, and I'm just gonna take this off now. So this will officially close off my breast augmentation series, the one, two, and three. I'm actually considering just kind of closing off the truth series. I started it in 2019. I feel like for 2021, we could do something different. If you have any suggestions, please comment below. And thank you so much for tuning in. Also, if you want me to try something a little more complex than this makeup look, which is generally what I do now because that's all I really know how to do, uh, please let me know. Thank you so much for giving me a reason to do this because, uh, you know, I feel like a human being for the next 20 minutes. And one last thing, I challenge you to do something like this for yourself, even if it's for no reason and you have nowhere to go, it's kind of fun. Or help someone in your home if you have children or a partner that might be interested in getting themselves all done up. It's, it's fun, it's fun to do. So, you know, it passes the time because what else are we gonna do? Okay, thank you so much, love you guys, bye. Say bye. Very exciting stuff.